And thank you, Justin, for the Geneva. Uh, I know people keep going back to this uh, Grover Norquist. Uh, are there any other pledges that you signed that we should know about? <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer quickly. Uh, two, uh, I, yeah, the two I've signed, and I, you know what? I, what I've, I, I really have learned a lesson through this is I'm not going to sign anything else. Uh, so you've got uh, because I, I just think it's 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 too confusing, uh, and my signature is to you, uh, and uh, what we're going to talk about. I'm going to be very upfront of where I'm at. But uh, the two pledges I've signed was uh, that I'm not going to raise taxes. That I, I committed to you all long before uh, Grover Norquist. I ever met the guy. Um, and then uh, the other one was cut cap and balance, uh, that I would not support an increase in the um, debt ceiling uh, if we didn't have real structural change. So those were the only two that I've signed. Okay, what, don't you think in terms of compromise, one of, one of the issues is all of the six Republican members on this uh, super committee have signed this Grover Norquist pledge. Wow. And so that means that it's impossible right. To have any yeah. kind of compromise for the debt ceiling or right. for the uh, for this uh, the uh, revenue. Yeah. revenue. So what's the what's you know the I mean John Boehner said well he got 98 percent of what he wanted. So what kind what are the Republicans going to give in terms of revenue? Well we'll have to see what the committee comes up with. Yes. Wow. I don't know. I'm not a good one. Knock her down. I've right. experienced that in nothing. Mary Shuskring from Elgin. Um, I've got so many things to say, I can't figure out which one. I'm very disturbed by what you're saying about Medicare. You're talking about the Paul Ryan plan to privatize it for people 55 and under, to give out of vouchers. The reason Medicare is in so much trouble today is because the uh, Medicare prescription, Part Medicare Part D, was drafted in order to partially privatize Medicare by setting up Medicare Advantage plans, which drain money out of Medicare and my pocket and everybody's pocket and put them into private insurance companies. And secondly, because Medicare Part D didn't refuse to give the government the power to negotiate prices with the, the uh, big pharmaceutical companies. So our Medicare money that all of us pay into out of our payroll taxes is being drained away into the coffers of big pharma. These drugs, which the way we do medicine nowadays is largely through medications, these drugs cost more in the United States than they do anywhere else. That's why people go to Canada and other places to get their medicines. The prices are bizarrely inflated, and that's what's causing Medicare so much loss of funds. And your solution is more privatization. That's a terrible idea. Please give it up. Get the insurance companies and the drug companies out of it. We need to expand Medicare and do Medicare for all. Other countries do. Now, in the ninth year of those cuts, the unemployment is 9.1%. So where's the evidence that these tax cuts for the most Where's the evidence that these cuts for the most affluent actually create jobs? For these cuts to be given to 
the very rich in the U.S. that the U.S. has to borrow money, and we, the taxpayers, have to pay it back with interest. I was trying to get through as many. Uh, I think clearly uh, the evidence, um, well, let me say this, you know, I get back to the stimulus, uh, which was another thing that was said that was going to be kept in the We want the tax cuts. No, where's the evidence yeah. to prove Nine to prove years. This? That's the question. Where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? Good question. Let's ask the president where the jobs are. Let's keep going. We got three more minutes. No answer. 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 I'll get the answer to you. You got no answer. No, to the group. So what's the, what's the question? The question is, where the, where are the jobs? I, I believe, absolutely believe the tax cuts um, or our tax structure is broken. I've talked about that before. We need to readdress. I think we've got a tax system that punishes productivity. Uh, that discourages people from being poured into it. Uh, so we need to reform that. We need to adjust that. Uh, it needs to be flatter. It needs to be fairer. Uh, How much money? I absolutely believe the evidence I've got is I've glimpsed it. Uh, where we had natural revenue growth here in Illinois uh, not too long ago. We raised taxes here in Illinois uh, just in the last eight months. They've already told us they've spent all that money. Uh, that uh, They're already out of money. They might have to raise it again. Uh, it, we're driving jobs out of Illinois. My evidence is Illinois is being the number one job creator for Indiana, Iowa, Missouri, <laughs> <laughs> We've got that right We've got one more minute. Let's do two more people. Go ahead. Two more people. Julie Riffle from Wasco, Illinois. Uh, you're talking about uh, taking power away from the EPA, shrinking them, taking taking power away from them. Okay, these new corporate citizens, apparently corporations are citizens, they're people now. Are we going to rely on their morals to keep them from poisoning our water and our food and our air and our ground? What what is this? Or are we going to look to Congress to regulate them? Considering Congress we get elected by getting money from the corporations, that kind of seems iffy to me. So, do corporations have morals too? <laughs> I look around this room. I do see some people who I know are very sharp business people who are also incredibly committed to our communities committed to our environment, committed to their employees. They seem like family. Uh, they really do. They, uh, they have that commitment, and I just all applaud them. I don't know. Not all of them. But I think the vast majority uh, do. And I think that's where you as voters and as consumers can speak uh, and say, if someone isn't acting responsibly, don't buy from them. That will get the message through. Let's do one more. One more question. Yes. Susan Russell, Batavia. Hey, Susan. I trust that in addition to your lapel pin and this voting card, you also got a health insurance card? <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. You? Let me tell, let me, that's a great question, and it's something I've wanted well, to talk about. Well, I just want to uh, answer Did I did? I have something else to say. My, my wife has it, but uh, yes, we have a family one. What we've done is uh, we get a book uh, very similar uh, to what Medicare Part D is. So it's a, it's a federally run health care benefits. We chose Blue Cross Blue Shield. I pay into it. I pay significantly more as a congressman than I did as in the state. Uh, so uh, it's, it's wonderful. I'm so thankful for it, uh, for my family. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a challenge. It's, it's, a, it's, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield basic. It's not something I have. Uh, someone else talked about pensions that we have. 40 years ago, congressional pensions were ridiculous. What they are now is I pay into it, and, and you need to know this, is if I serve 10 years, uh, then I best after 10 years. And what I can get is 1.5% of my salary. So in 10 years, it's 15% of my salary. Uh, if it's 20 years, I get 30% of my salary. There's a lot of misunderstanding out there, uh, and I'm paying into it every no, single month. It's coming out of my paycheck. Teachers don't do that. They can't do that. They don't get anywhere near that. Teachers don't. Don't so. teach. <laughs> If I can have your attention real quick. I would, like to, I would like to again just reiterate a couple of things. Number one, you know, we've had the lowest tax rates.
this country has years. seen for individuals in the you last 10 years. You can't have more of my money. Yes. I don't need any more. Obviously. Yes. During the last 10 years, we you have been And it's been the lowest for the past 80 years. And um, we, under the Bush administration, there certainly has been a reduction in regulation. And again, I... And yet we have gone well, into the first recession we have seen you can't make in sense. all of our lifetimes, and um, and there is no growth in this economy. So again, I, like everyone, uh, many other people here, would like to know what concrete evidence do you have that shows that reduction in taxes, reduction in regulation creates jobs. Yeah. 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 I will answer the question, but before I do, again, a reminder, I know a lot of you had questions that you wanted to ask. Please come out, fill this out. Uh, let us know if you want to set up an appointment. We'd be happy to try and meet with you. Um, I, to me, the evidence is, is meeting with business owners, uh, talking with people, small business owners, who here in the 14th Congressional District who tell me, let me just give you one example. that you, they got a reduction in regulations in the last 10 years, they had reduced. Let me, let me give you a very specific, I'm telling you, let me end with this. I met with a, a local business, local business, please respect, uh, local business here, great company, they manufacture high precision parts for airplanes and things. Their peak, they had 300 employees. Uh, through the recession, they've gone to 200 employees. They're starting to hire back. Um, I talked to this uh, employer, family business, multi-generational business. He said, I would love to hire full-time employees, but I can't. I'm hiring all temporary workers uh, because I just don't know how much, I just don't know how much health care. No, listen, I, he, he, they aren't. They're more expensive because there's not the consistency there. So he would much, I just am telling you what he told me. He would rather, he's got 200 full-time employees. He'd much rather have full-time employees than temporary employees. They're better workers. They're more committed. Uh, they have longevity to it. But he's fearful because he's uncertain of how much health care is going to cost him in the next few years. So he's hiring temporary workers. I'll stick around. I need to make sure I get that uh, card back if that's okay. Right there. Oh, and you people from that Thank you. you. I am I'm really quite I am so impressed. It is a gorgeous night out here. We've got 100 plus people here spending time on a gorgeous night talking, debating. This is good. This is good. It's hard. It's uncomfortable. But it's good. Let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. I love it.